How you end a game is one of the biggest conundrums that you, as a video game enjoyer, will face on a regular basis, as well as how to afford a PS5 and how to explain the Like a Dragon series when your roommate walks in on you playing this. That came out real nice. It's for an achievement, I swear. Anyway, about your half of the rent? Deciding which ending to aim for in a game is a serious decision, one that merits careful consideration and a weighing up of pros and cons, which makes it all the more maddening that there are some games out there where it's entirely possible to get the worst ending entirely by accident. Seriously, a heads up would have been nice. Now I'm watching the world's grimmest cutscene and wondering how I blundered into this. Here are seven bad endings you can all too easily get by accident, but we're massive spoilers, obviously, for the following games. Natalia? Now you can call me... Alex. If there's anything that's been drilled into video game fans, it's that if you see a button flash up on screen, you smash that button as fast as you can, or everything is going to go horribly wrong. So if you found yourself playing Resident Evil Revelations 2, where poor Claire Redfield gets pinned by her mutated former boss Neil Fisher, and a flashing button prompt was shown front and center, you'd automatically start mashing that button and have Claire shoot Neil in his stupid mutated face. Well done, you not only helped Claire save herself, but you've also set yourself on course for the worst ending in the game. Good job. What you were supposed to do, you idiot, was press the other, non-flashy button prompt that pops up at the top of the screen that causes you to switch characters and have other protagonists, Moira Burton, crawl towards the gun and shoot Neil. I'd also like to congratulate my ten-year-old cousin on his new job writing Resident Evil Revelations 2. Because you have Moira do this, she then has the confidence to also shoot the mutated Alex Wesker at the end of the game, saving little Natalia here and helping everyone to escape. Hooray! Here! Run to the ladder! They'll be too good at following that quick time prompt and have Claire shoot Neil instead, and you set a whole bunch of things in motion that lead to poor unconfident Moira being crushed to death. Because Moira isn't there to stop Mutant Alex, little Natalia dies. Bad enough, except for the fact that this is a Resident Evil game, and so this kid's head is home to the dormant consciousness of Alex Wesker. Wow, my ten-year-old cousin is on fire. When Natalia dies, that consciousness unlocks, new child-possessing Alex kills mutated Alex before walking off into the world ready to cause chaos. All while Resident Evil mainstay Barry Burton looks on, unable to shoot the small child he'd been trying to rescue this entire time. And all because you're too good at quick time events. Poor shame. Oh, come on! Got a little present for me over there, too. Blockers. Managed to walk those few yards to the table. The rest will be up to you and you alone. You heard him. We've got one last chance. I'm taking the wheel. Endotrizine, Rogue Sokka Tower. It can be a little challenging to always know exactly what's going on in Cyberpunk 2077, perhaps because of the huge cast of characters, all of whom have their own murky motivations. Or perhaps because everyone in Cyberpunk talks in inscrutable hacker slang. Or perhaps because the game isn't afraid to interrupt vital, complex final mission discussions to have someone text you about some free t-shirts. Hey, nothing beats free, am I right? Sorry, Johnny, what were we talking about? The imminent total collapse of my brain or something? This ambiguity that is shot through Cyberpunk 2077 has its most disastrous potential downside in the final mission. Excellent. You have come. 
The crunch point comes after main character V, ailing as their mind fails to handle the presence of Johnny Silverhand, faces a raft of choices as to what to do with their little time remaining. It seems you are running out of time. In V's possession are two types of pill. If you've been paying close attention, you'll remember that they are pseudo-endotrizine that lets Johnny have control of your body, or omega blockers that suppress Johnny a bit, but don't solve the fundamental problem of your mind being ripped to pieces by his presence. None of this sounds ideal. Sinister Corporation Arasaka seems to offer a way out, but can scarcely be trusted. Johnny wants to take control of V's body and storm Arasaka by force. Friends can potentially help, but risk their lives by doing so. And there's another choice in the mix too. Could also just put all this to rest. There is another option, you know. What? We put all this, the pills, everything, to bed. If we don't try something, anything, we're both doomed. What exactly does V have in mind here? Well, it's not clear, but forget for a moment that you're seeing this in the context of a list about bad endings you can easily get by accident, and the response for, toss pills, I know exactly what we're going to do, starts to look pretty appealing, right? Perhaps some kind of galaxy brain play to get everyone out alive? I can testify that it does start to seem like a good option, because what you're about to see is the ending to Cyberpunk 2077 that I got when I played it entirely by accident. Pick this option and V tosses the pills, which unbeknownst to you, locks you into a brief chat with Johnny in which V explains they've decided to end their life by gunshot. Not how I'd have done it, but that's all right. Then, that happens. Then, over the credits, all your friends give you a ferocious bollocking for choosing this ending, even though there's a strong chance you didn't really choose it at all. Oh well, at least the length and severity of the aforementioned bollockings gives you plenty of time to contemplate the many, many ways this horrible outcome could have been a bit more clearly signposted. If there is a hell, I hope you're in it. Rotting. Burning. All of it. Pan Am, I just wanted to toss some pills. See you back in an old save, I guess. Oddworld Soulstorm is a game that consists of 50% puzzle platforming, 25% going through lockers, and 25% going through those same lockers again because you died during the puzzle platforming. Another thing that isn't great is the bad ending, which is disturbingly easy to get, and also disturbingly disturbing. Abe's mission in this game is to reach the titular Soulstorm Brewery and pour in a magical antidote to help free his fellow Mudokons from indentured servitude. But in order to do that, you must have Abe save 80% of his fellow Mudokons in at least 12 of the first 15 levels. <laughs> Sounds easy enough, you might be thinking, if you haven't played the game. Problem is, it's very easy to miss Mudokons hidden in secret areas or get them killed, like in one of the ladder defense levels, for instance. Miss or mulch enough Mudokons and you'll obtain bad Kwama, and this really can F up Abe's plans. Uh, I don't think that'll heal. See, Abe has a special amulet with him, and with enough good Kwama, during his train ride to the brewery, the mystical creature inside of it will gift him with incredible powers to help him free even more Mudokons. But with bad Kwama, the poor bug will start to painfully shrivel and die, much to Abe's dismay and yours. So much hurt to bear. Not only does this suck to watch, but it sets off a chain of events that are even more harrowing than seeing every molecule of moisture being sucked out of a cute bug's body. No. 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 A distraught Abe goes back to his friends, shares the bad news, and then trips while carrying a case of the brewery's highly flammable Soulstorm brew, soaking the train's engine room up, ah, beans. You're given a flash of hope as train driver Toby stops a furnace spark from igniting you all, but that relief is shorter than my success on Vine, as another spark falls and you watch on in horror as sweet Abe and his friends get barbecued alive. Yeah! 
Well, at least it can't get any worse, like the fiery train slamming into the brewery you were trying to sneak into, thus destroying any hope of saving Murdercon kind. Ah, oh, double beans! Back to rooting around in lockers, I guess. Pretty smart of the Empire to make it so that if you ever try to kill any of its senior figures, you have failed at being good and have to join their team. Even smarter of them to make it so that you can very easily blunder into the evil ending of The Force Unleashed simply by accidentally wandering in the wrong direction. The final mission of this Star Wars action game takes place on the Death Star. You are Starkiller, who begins the game as Vader's apprentice, but following several plot revelations is now attempting to rescue Ram Kota, a Jedi who remarkably managed to escape the Jedi Killing Order 66. Along with Obi-Wan Kenobi, Yoda, Grogu, Ahsoka Tano, Balan Skull, Cal Kestis, Caleb Doom, Kelleran Beck, Reva Savander, Gungi, Nari, Eno Cordova. Sorry, did the Empire get any Jedi that day? In a bid to rescue Ram, who is being held by the Emperor, Starkiller is relentless, never pausing except for emergencies, like the opportunity to force boop a stormtrooper into the Death Star's planet cracking laser weapon. Fire. Fire. Vader attempts to stop you, but of course by this point in the game you're such a souped up force fighter that Darth's only option is to get his ass first kicked and then chucked through a window. Now you're in the Emperor's room, a cutscene makes it clear your next objective is to hurry up to the Emperor and rescue Ram. And hopefully you're able to suppress your well-honed video game instincts to just quickly check there's nothing else in this room worth seeing first. Oops, you just entered Vader's bad ending Event Horizon. Getting too close to the defeated Vader locks you in to the game's evil ending, in which you fight your old master once more and this time do serious damage to the Star Wars canon timeline and also to Anakin Skywalker's torso. Needless to say, having his most powerful enforcer killed in front of the whole army is exactly what the Emperor wanted, actually. And so the game ends with your friends dead and you crushed under a spaceship, shortly to be reconstituted as the Emperor's new apprentice. <laughs> You had such promise. Serves you right for looking around. Looking around leads to anger. Anger leads to hate. Hate leads to, well, you know the rest. Who knew the very first Sonic the Hedgehog game had different endings? Only two endings, and which one you get depends on how many optional bonus Chaos Emeralds you collected along the way. Fail to get them all, and Robotnik will taunt you on the end screen, encouraging you to try again. Huh, neat. Anyway, if you do that in the next Sonic game, Tails is murdered. This is Sonic 2, or the 8-bit version at least, released in 1992 for the Game Gear handheld. This game introduced the character of Miles, Tails, Prower, who is kidnapped by Robotnik at the start of the game. So perhaps it's only fitting that it also gets to off him at the end with no warning. Alright, admittedly what happens to Tails if you fail to hunt down sufficient Chaos Emeralds is open to interpretation, but Tails being murdered off camera by Robotnik is, to our minds, a valid reading of this text. Let's consider both endings. One sees Tails freed. The other, the one you get if you're lacking in emeralds by the end of the game, ends with Tails nowhere in sight, then Sonic running through a field at night all alone. Then this. Good job, player. You Mufasa'd Tails. In any case, this weird vibes ending will be sprung upon you merely for failing to access and complete enough bonus stages to finish with the right amount of crystals. Something so easily done, we'd wager it's the ending most players will have seen. Wait, I just remembered that this game came out two years before The Lion King, so maybe it's more accurate to say that Mufasa got tails -ed. Tails did, tails did, tails did. They're dead, is the important thing.
If any kind of upbeat ending is possible in Dark Souls, we want it, because it's been a rough ride so far. Luckily, there are two endings in Dark Souls, and one of them is broadly positive. After defeating the final boss, you can do something called Link the Fire, which involves interacting with a bonfire found in the boss's room, which banishes the Curse of the Undead, a feat achieved by, oh, uh, setting the whole world on fire, looks like? I mean, I'll take it. Dark Souls offers players a choice of endings at this juncture here though, which is great. Less great is that the bad ending, in which you usher in an age of darkness, is set in motion simply by walking too far away. In a game that, we remind you, you really are only likely to finish at all if you've developed an inflexible habit of poking your nose into every nook and cranny. How easy is it to make this mistake? Watch me do it live with thousands of people watching. How do um, you, uh... I don't know, I don't know what to do now. Um... Shall I just keep How, uh, going forwards? What do? That's amazing. Someone will tell you. There'll be someone in the, the chat here. If I just... Oh, ooh, there we go. There ah, we go. Time for a cutscene. Oh, darn. Blundered into the bad ending. Rats. Oh, well, how bad can it be? Ah! Oh, pretty bad. Let me tell you something about Banjo-Kazooie. In this game, should you use up all of your lives and fail to save Banjo's sister Tooty, the evil witch Gruntilda uses a special machine to absorb all of Tooty's beauty. And so poor Tooty becomes a horrible monster, while Gruntilda becomes Victoria Beckham in a game over so silly we can't help but love it. <laughs> However, what's remarkable is quite how easy it is to set off this bad ending. Should you need to stop playing at all, for example because you're a child in the 90s who has other things going on like, I don't know, school, you would have to save and quit. But hit that save and quit button and the game over cutscene would automatically play, showing you poor Tootie's horrible fate even if you still had plenty of lives left. It seems that developer Rare felt that not finishing the game in one sitting was reason enough to play the bad ending cutscene every single time a player had to put the game down, even if it was to do something important. <laughs> And that sense of failure is why I can never finish my maths homework and I'm now stuck doing top 10 videos on YouTube forever. Wait, this list goes up to seven. It's not a number. One, two, eight, ten. I know some stuff. <laughs> well, we've come to the end of the video, folks, and what did we learn? We learned that Gungi made it. Order 66 couldn't keep Gungi down. Could anything? Doubtful. Not the same story for Kit Fisto, though, was it? No. Did... Clo Coon. Did they... <laughs> is that a real? Yeah, he's real. Did they really get Kit Fisto? Yeah, they got Kit Fisto. Damn. The Emperor took out Kit Fisto. The Emperor took out Kit Fisto. James is telling me that the Emperor took out Kit Fisto. It's like you haven't even seen episode three. Revenge of the Sith. <laughs> Well, look, coming next year, a nine-part Disney Plus event, Kit Fisto returns as a, as a sort of cool robot. Yeah. <laughs> You'll see. Anyway, that's the end of this video. Gungi made it. Here are some other videos. Gungi made it. Why not subscribe to our Patreon if you want to go the optional extra mile in supporting the video work we do. Gungi made it. A portion of all proceeds go to Gungi. <laughs> <laughs> no, they don't need to, because Gungi made it. Gungi made it. I'd say the same for Eve Cobb. <laughs>